the World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Again, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of the Good Friends Better Enemies podcast. And this week, one of our dear, close, personal, longtime friends of the show, Nick from the Universal Wrestling Podcast, is back as a special guest. And Nick, this week, we are bringing you back in time to the year 1996, about 25 years ago, in fact, for a very special watch along of Monday Night Raw from October 28th, 1996. Now, Nick. I know this is not your wheelhouse. This is not your era. Talk to me, man. Talk to me, Goose. What do you have going on? What's going on in your mind? What are you thinking? What are you seeing? We're going to tell the audience in just a second when to start and how to get on here. But 96, where's your head at, man? Yeah, I was six years old, man. So uh, wasn't really watching wrestling. I started watching wrestling in 1998. My first match was uh, when uh, Mankind threw, uh, or excuse me, Taker threw Mankind off the Hell in the Cell at the King of the Ring, so I wasn't really a, a, a fan then, but of course I go back and I watch this stuff, and I'm just I'm just stoked. We discussed it before, and we wanted to do something like this, and I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it, so you picked it, and I'm all for it. Yeah, it should be so much fun. So for anybody that's listening right now that wants to watch along with us, we are on the WWE uh, Network, I myself. Here in Canada, Canada, I'm logged on through my laptop, and I know, Nick, that you are logged on through Peacock. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick uh, little um, piece of uh, news here in terms of this particular broadcast. Nick, you having Peacock, you mentioned to me off air that you have a couple of commercials coming up. So what we're going to do is I am going to pause my playback as your commercial rolls and then as soon as you're back up you just tell me and we'll continue on so when when you hit a commercial just let me know that means i have to hit pause and then that way hopefully we can stay on some kind of track here for the listening audience but i'm pretty excited about getting into this sucker so for those of you listening ladies and gentlemen head up to the wwe network and click on the raw portion of your network and I believe, Nick, you said for fans in the U.S., it is season four. And then, of course, October 28, 1996. Yes, and sir. Here, and here in Canada, it is just going to the year 1996 and then going down to October 28, 1996. So uh, just give our audience a few seconds to get in with that. And, Nick, uh, we have some pretty interesting stuff going on in the world of wrestling right now. But I just wanted you to quickly tell us. Well, we give the audience a minute to get to the portion of the show where we're going to start the playback. Uh, tell them about how they can find you, what you have going on with your podcast, and, and hit us up with your handles, man. Yes, sir. So you can follow us on Twitter at the UW Pod and Instagram at UW Podcast. Tomorrow, that is Wednesday, October 20th, we're dropping a huge episode I sat down with Chris Dunn, a former WWE creative writer, and we talked about everything. We talked about him writing for Bianca Belair during her WrestleMania run, meetings with Vince McMahon, hanging out with uh, Michael Hayes, just a lot of good stuff. He was there from 2016 to 2021. He left uh, in April. He was not let go. He was not fired. He, he left and uh, it was a really good conversation. So, yeah, look out for that. You can uh, go on to our website, UW Podcast, or excuse me, uwpod.com, and you can listen it, listen to it there. Jeez. Yeah, man, that sounds awesome, actually. And, you know, the thing about that particular time frame from 2016 to 2021, yeah. I feel like the WWE as a company changed so much in that yeah. time time frame that that would be a really really cool interview to uh, to listen to i can't wait to listen to that so yeah. thank you for letting us know about that man and um absolutely all set i'm ready to hit play here how do you feel yeah let's do it
Okay, so we go from a writer starting in 2016 to all the way back to 1996. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Nick, in five, four, three, two, one, play. All right, this is awesome. Nick, you on, on board with me here? Yes, sir. I'm watching uh, Stone Cold slash uh, Brian Pillman's leg with some sort of, I don't know, foreign object. It's a steel chair, and, and that's uh, that was what was known back in then as Pillmanizing the ankle. You <laughs> put the ankle inside the uh, top fold of the chair and smash down it off the second rope. There we see Brett the Hitman Hart, the incomparable Brett the Hitman Hart, as well as Stone Cold Steve Austin. These two are about set to clash at the Survivor Series 1996 which is maybe one of my favorite pay-per-views of all time. And uh, that would be Bret Hart's first match in ring on television since WrestleMania 12, where he dropped the title to Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Nick, what do you think about these old school uh, production values? What about the, you think about this intro to Monday Night Raw, the uh, the video package we're seeing here? Yeah, yeah, dude, I love this. I love the the theme song. It, you get it all the time with, you know, current uh, bands, but this is just, I don't know, it just, it just brings you back to, Good old Monday night raw, you know, like, I don't know. It's just, it's great. It's, it's uh, really fun. And then we see right now the uh, Titan Tron, which is not really a Titan Tron. It's three letters R A W with uh road dog coming out. Right. That looks yeah, like road exactly. dog. That's exactly. And see, this is, this is exactly, this is the year I started watching wrestling. So the big R A W for me holds a special place. Yeah. I do feel like the WWE production these days is way too over the top with the <laughs> uh, LED lights and yeah. uh, you know the everything has a has a screen on it and then of course the uh, CGI uh, characters of all all the all the wrestlers top names coming out. I'm just I'm very purist. I love this old school presentation. Just yep. give me some ropes. Give me a couple of you know. Give me four corner posts and give me some some. Uh, some ring aprons and I'm happy. I don't need all the pomp and circumstance. Yeah. Was this the time where uh, he was still with Jeff Jarrett or no? This was the time where he was in between. So back okay. in uh, July of 1995, we yeah. had seen uh, them, the, the road dog and uh, Jeff Jarrett split up and it was actually revealed not too, not too long ago on an earlier episode of this uh, era of Monday night raw back in, I believe two or three weeks previous that Jesse James, actually, who is the road dog, was actually the one who was singing for yeah. Jeff Jarrett at the In Your House 2 pay-per-view. So he's now dubbed as the real Double J Jesse James. Yeah. Something similar or familiar, excuse me, that I see right now is the uh, the ref. He is still refing, I think, to this day. That's yeah, impressive. That's, Jeff Stone. that's his name. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So we have we have Double J Jesse James going on up against uh, Salvatore Sincere, who is also known as Tom Brandy, a uh, pretty good worker from back in the day. He was from the um, Northeast as well, so he had a cup of coffee in the Fed. This is one of those uh, oh. character gimmicks that they came up with back in '96, where they were trying to give guys gimmicks to get them more established as um, kind of main roster members. Yeah. But they would frequently be doing jobs to guys like you guys. You had guys like the goon and TL Hopper who was a <laughs> and all that kind of Jeez. stuff. It's cool to see the evolution of Road Dog right now or Double J. That's what we called him in 1996. To, you know who he is now. He's a producer for NXT. It's just it's phenomenal to see the progress of a superstar, you know, from, you know, rookie to veteran to producer, you know. Oh, 100%. I absolutely agree. And he's got a great mind for the business. Um, you know, this is actually kind of cool, too. Just now we talk about this. So this particular event is happening in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which so back in the day to save money as a cost cutting measure, the WWF used to run uh, television tapings, say, on a Monday after a pay-per-view. And they tape all, all uh, three or four weeks of their paper of their television for Raw for the following month. So this crowd here in Fort Wayne would have been able to see all of the different matches and angles going into Survivor Series because it would all would have been happening on the same night, which I think is kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Now, who's on commentary? I feel like I hear um, Vince and Jerry. Is that it? Do you know? Yeah, that's Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler. I'm fairly certain probably Jim Ross is there as well. I haven't had my audio on because I didn't yeah. want to scramble up but uh, i guess i can put it on a little low here and i got see. it yeah as low as possible but you can still see that road dog regardless of what 
era, what year he was in, he always was dancing. He was always jiving and, and jerking. And, you know, that you got to respect that, you know, like he's, uh, I don't know. I love it. I love, I, I love everything about, uh, uh, road dog. Oh, me too. I, he's, uh, he's a really, really solid character. And one of the, you know, tentpole characters as part of DX. And of course the attitude era as well, that would only yeah. be a few years after this. In fact, I've always made the argument that I think the Attitude Era started at Survivor Series 1996. I think that was the yeah. the, um, the pay-per-view that kind of blasted off that era for me. But, um, you know, we just saw as we were talking on the split screen that tonight's main event is the British Bulldog, one half of the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions with Owen Hart going up against the World Wrestling Federation Champion Shawn Michaels. Now, Shawn Michaels and Psycho Sid were on a collision course at this point going into... Um, Survivor Series 1996, and we also have uh, the Bulldog, who had been challenging Sean twice previous at pay-per-views, uh, In Your House, Beware of Dog in May of 96, as well as uh, the King of the Ring pay-per-view in 1996, two phenomenal matches, yeah. so it's great to see that you're going to see a rematch of these pay-per-view matches, you know, here in November of 96, it's kind of fun to think that a few months previous, you would have been paying twenty nine ninety five to see that. <laughs> um, the competitor for Road Dog, what was he? Was he a jobber or was he like uh, somebody that they, you know, were trying to push but never got there? Because you told me his name. I've never heard of him until tonight. Yeah, that's Salvatore Sincere. We just saw the Road Dog go over with a pump handle. Slam. Okay, yep. At the time. Salvatore Sincere, as I had mentioned, his name was Tom Brandy. Real name was Tom Brandy. He was a uh, he's a worker who was fairly well known on the independents at the time. Okay. And of course, uh, so the Fed brought him in as a type of, as I said, um, they wanted to establish some of these star, some of these guys by giving them some wins on TV yeah. and give them some sort of a colorful personality. But ultimately, the goal was just to use them as enhancement talents. Yeah. Well, he's got the look. I mean, it, it definitely helped Double J here. You know what I mean? Like he has a look to, you know, compete with Double J. So, oh, absolutely, that's cool. yeah. Now we see a promo for the Survivor Series sponsored by Milton Bradley's Karate Fighters. <laughs> and there is your, as your aforementioned yep. Doc Hendricks. This is Doc Hendricks, Michael Hayes. He's yep. telling us all about the Survivor Series. Madison Square Garden, ninth November seventeenth at seven p.m. Dude, I wish they brought back. 7 p.m. pay-per-views. I know they did that during the pandemic, and it's uh, seems like they, they've stopped. But, dude, that's the best. Yeah, and you know what I got to say, too, is I don't hate the fact that we're getting those Saturday night pay-per-views now, the, the big ones, the Royal Rumbles and the SummerSlam. Yeah. Hopefully they do that for WrestleMania as well. And I don't think they'll do it for Survivor Series, but I'm a big fan of yeah. those shows on a Saturday What was that about? Stone Cold just interrupted uh, Michael Hayes. Stone Cold right now is uh, at the production studio. He's waiting to talk to Bret Hart got, uh, via got satellite. It. Bret Hart's up in Calgary. He's been training like a maniac to get ready for his match against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Of course, now we see the match card run down for what we're going to see at Survivor Series, a traditional four-on-four -four Survivor Series matchup. You have Rocky Maivia debuting with uh, <laughs> Mark Henry, the wild yep. man Mark Burrow, accompanied by Sable, and the stalker. Going up against Crush, Jerry the King Lawler, Goldust, and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. That was a great match that we saw. It was a little yeah. different by the time we got to a pay-per-view, but a lot of fun. This is cool. I like how uh, Michael Hayes is, like, discussing Survivor Series. We're not seeing, you know, we're not hearing Michael Cole and Pat McAfee look at, uh, you know, the, 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 the card for the next pay-per-view. It's Michael Hayes live, I guess. Maybe not live, but it, it, it's cool. This is different. I like it. I dig it. Yeah, this is, to me, like something that's kind of lost in today's product is everything yeah. is so overproduced and kind of like perfect. Uh, it's kind of similar to me. I just recently got a record player, and I think that there's some sort of authenticity to the fact that you there get you the go. pops and scratches when you listen to a record as opposed to, you know, your CD or, or listen to your, uh, your, your I, iPhone or what have you, your uh, iTunes. So yeah, yeah. I like that sometimes there's a little bit of grit to this particular presentation. All right. We're seeing Bret Hart playing with his pussy. Oh, I mean his cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You saw Steve Austin just tell a woman that she ought to hit the streets in the outfit she's wearing. So, Dude, Stone Cold. I don't even know what to say. Oh, 
commercial break there, Jay. All right, let's hit pause. Commercial 58 break. seconds. Steve Austin was really coming into his own at this point, man. Like, he, uh, he was really firing on all cylinders, and um, he would just get bigger and bigger as, as time yeah. went on. It's incredible. Again, watching the evolution, you know. Road Dog, we discussed that. Stone Cold, he's heating up, man. It's just incredible. Was this before or after the King of, King of the Ring um, promo? This was after. This was November. The King of the Ring happened in June. How are we looking on that commercial, man? Uh, we got 20 seconds there, Jay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I believe, hopefully you paused when, I, when we decided uh, that we were going to hit a commercial. That's just the nature of the network presentation on Peacock, to my understanding. But uh, uh, I think Nick's going to give us a quick countdown here. We'll hit paw, uh, five, hit four, back four three, two, one. We're back. Boom. There we go. We see this, the uh, Kona Crusher yes. Crush. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Accompanied by Clarence Mason. That is Crush. Do you remember Crush? No, I don't know who this guy is oh, at all. It was a pretty big deal. He was uh, big throughout the mid-90s. He was a member of Demolition back in the uh, 80s and early 90s as well. Yeah. So, um, he yeah, looks he looks like a mother effer I wouldn't mess with, you know? Yeah, he was a badass for sure. So, And uh, who's his manager? That's Clarence Mason. That is, uh, He had been managing a couple of different talents throughout I this. like him. And now we have uh, Aldo Mantoya, who you might know as Just Incredible, coming out. Um, he was the Portuguese Man of War. Um, so okay. Just Incredible was a, was a mainstay in ECW. I don't know if you yes. watched much ECW, but that Come is Just I'm from Philadelphia. Getting some pyro here. Yep. So what do you think of this show so far? I mean, obviously, it's a little different. In terms of uh, what we would see a couple yeah. of years later with every match being with huge star power for the most yep. part. But what do you kind of... Oh, my dude, Mike Kyoto from South Jersey. Sorry to interrupt. That's um, okay. It's still to the, you know, 1996, the production value is amazing. You know, it's it's really cool to see that they, you know, it, it, it they didn't lose uh, a step is what I'm trying to say. It seems like from the... You know, from the the the, the uh, sparklers, you know, to the to the production, it just it looks really good. Justin incredible, just incredible. He looks a little corny, but I uh, I dig it. Yeah, this was at a time where we were still getting a lot of occupational gimmicks and yeah things of that nature. But uh, yeah, I mean, how long was he with the company? Pardon? How long was with how long was he with the company till he uh, jump shipped? I know that he came back after. ECW folded, but he was kind of in and out. He was Aldo Mentoya for a few years, and then he went to the ECW, and yeah. then he came back to uh, the WWF. Um, in fact, before ECW went under, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and uh, oh wow, that was pretty impressive. That uh, yeah. press was dropping him right. Oh, so JR is there. There's JR. That's pre JR cowboy hat era. My God. Yeah. <laughs> Good God Almighty! <laughs> yeah, so uh, at this point, Jim Ross is actually playing a heel on television. So he's the heel commentator, which was kind of strange. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you describe that. Kind of a strange um, vortex in wrestling history. You know, yeah. you never think of think of Jim Ross as a heel, that's for sure. Now, let me ask you a question. Are they trying to put over this guy? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Justin uh, Credible's com opponent. Are they trying to do, like, what is this match? What is this match? Why is this happening? I think they're trying to establish Crush as a dominant heel right now. Okay. Uh, the idea being that, you know, again, like, this would be uh, Aldo Matoya. He would have been in the company for a while at this point. He wasn't necessarily a guy who won very much, but he would yeah. win occasionally. He was a really solid worker. So when you have... Uh, somebody like Crush, who had just recently, back in August, come back to the company after a bit of a layoff. Uh, he's, they're trying to establish him, I think, as a little bit of, yeah. little bit of a monster heel here. Okay. He kind of reminds me of uh, the United States champion. What's his name? Damian Priest. Yeah. Oh, we just saw Crush hit the famous heart punch, which was his finishing. Three. It's over. So, fairly short work there from Crush. 
Uh, unfortunately, Aldo Montoya would not be going to the pay window this evening. <laughs> not at least with the the winner's purse. He'd be getting the yeah. loser's purse. I'll tell you one thing. Vince McMahon, he was good at commentary. He was one of my favorite commentators ever. I know his voice is weird when it comes to commentating, but uh, I dig it. See, I think it's weird because you're probably more used to him as the the character of Vince McMahon. The yeah, Vince the McMahon evil character. villain. Yeah. Yeah, whereas I grew up with, oh, we got C. Crush taken out a security guard. Oh, I no, I hope she says, oh, this is, this is horrible. This is actually impressive that his golf shirt's still tucked in. Oh, now it's not. Okay. I hope he's not an actor. I'm pretty sure he's a plant. <laughs> he wouldn't, yeah. he wouldn't be showing this if it was. If who's it was a, uh, who is that? That's Mike Kyoto. That's Jack Doan. Who's that other guy? White? No. What's his name? I didn't see it. Uh, the to... ref. The ref. The chubby yeah, I guy. Didn't see who it was. Sorry. Yeah, you're good. But uh, yeah, so uh, going back to Vince, I mean Vince McMahon. I I think because I grew up with him as a commentator, so yeah, it, yeah I always kind of. I'm very comfortable hearing him on commentary. Now yeah. we're seeing a replay of what happened last week on Monday Night Raw. Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley at this point. Yeah. Um, had taken out. Oh, look at Gorilla. Yeah. He looks What's he good. doing? What's he up to? He's the president of the WWF at this point. Oh, shit. Yeah. So we had seen uh, Kurt Heading as Mr. Perfect. Uh flirt with coming out of retirement and then of course backstage we just seen that uh, Triple H Hunter Hearst Helmsley nailed Mr. Perfect with an anvil case causing yeah. him to be unable to compete. Mark Merrow the current Intercontinental Champion gets called out and decides to put the title on the line as a make good for Perfect's yeah. injury. Love and, that title. And it was a swerve. There you go. Now you find out that oh! all set up so that Mark Merrill would do the no! job. Triple H is the new Intercontinental Champion, and he's aligned himself with Mr. Perfect. That's the ref right there. Who is that? Uh, oh, you missed it. I missed it again. Sorry, That's man. Incredible. No, no, you're good. Okay, so they're aligned together right now, or what? They're aligned together right now. So the whole thing was they had been building it up for a few weeks, and it ended up being a swerve. Swerve. I dig it. And I love that title. Yeah, what a great title, eh? Cody brought that back. He did. He did yeah. indeed. If you will, baby. Yeah. All right, so we're watching Mr. Perfect talk to good old Jim Ross. On uh, on Superstars of Wrestling, exactly. That was a syndicated show back in the mid-90s. Yeah. And here we have Uncle Steve Austin waiting in studio again. Uh, oh. Jerking me around. <laughs> oh, here we got a commercial for Milton oh. Bradley Karate Fighters. I hear the theme song. I know who's coming next. Okay, this is interesting. You have the commercial as well? Yep. Yeah, it's kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> is that Sean Mooney? No, that, that was Todd Pettengale, actually. Todd Pettengale, I knew it. It was one or the other. Now, who's this? This is Henry, or sorry, this is Phineas Godwin. So we had a tag team back then called the Godwin family. It was I've heard of it. O and Phineas I Godwin. So their initials stood for hog and pig. <laughs> Dude, he was good. My buddy James from that 90s wrestling podcast interviewed him. Phenomenal interview. Oh, he is great. And actually, we've been talking to James a little bit lately. We might uh, be having him on in the next uh, coming weeks. Nice. Yeah. But uh, it's really, really interesting stuff here to go back and see this kind of thing. Like, I never personally owned yeah. the Milton Bradley Karate Fighters. It didn't really hold much interest for me, but... Um, it's you were great, missing out. Get, you know, the kids, the kids involved, the kids see this on television and they want to, they see their favorite superstars playing it. They want to yeah. go get it for the Christmas season, right? You got it. 
Let's see. Oh, commercial. All right. Hit pause, folks. So it's been a pretty interesting show thus far. A lot of action, a lot of different uh, angles and stories to get yeah. into. It's fun for me to be able to tell you about them because I know. Yeah, I dig it. Familiar. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a lot of fun, too, to ask questions and just, you know, not be afraid of not knowing. You know, it's, it's cool to learn as dumb as that sounds. Oh, it's absolutely. I mean, you're yeah. not going to know everything. I, there's a lot of stuff even for current day product. I, I bet you probably know more about current day stuff than I do because I'm just not nearly as interested in, as, in it as I, as I would be this kind of stuff. I, uh, I did mention to a friend of mine that I think that for me, in terms of my wrestling fandom, I'm looking more in the rear view mirror than the front, the, the front yeah. wheel. Uh, it's just not quite as interesting for me. So, Jay, you know, sorry to interrupt. And, I'm Vince McMahon. Uh, we got five seconds here. Four, three, two. Boom. There we go. There right, we go. Back at it. And Brian Pillman week. is live next week. Oh, in his home. Don't tell me this is where that begins with Stone Cold, is it? Have you heard about that that angle? Uh, yeah. I wasn't living under a rock. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, that was that would be the following week's raw. Next week's raw is when that. Oh uh, shit! Pillman's got a gun. Damn, man. Yeah, man. Pretty All crazy right, so stuff. I'm just watching Stone Cold Live WWF Studios. Just uh, Vince and him are talking. Yeah, and now I'm on to uh, replaying what happened the following. And actually, in in, in, in this particular instance, it had happened. The day before, the morning before on Superstar, yeah. Sunday morning Superstar. And when you said Superstars was in the morning, what is that, like a Saturday morning thing? Sunday morning. Sunday, okay. Sunday morning. It was kind of cool. It was fun back in the day that you could get up and... Yeah, now it's a bunch of jobbers. And, pardon? Now it's a bunch of jobbers. Yeah, well, it was back yeah. then too, but uh, I mean, it was, I don't know, it was more fun back then, I feel like. Yeah. Everything's more fun when you're a kid. Yeah. Wham! There you go. There's the yep. filming of the ankle. Yep. He's got a Nick Bryce brace on for whatever reason. And now Austin's coming back and he's done, not done. Getting up on the top rope. Boom. Now he's going into the... Uh, I guess he's going to the hospital. That was quick. Oh, now he's... Okay, so it's an ambulance. Damn, Stone Cold was a bad ass. Oh, look, there's Hebner. <laughs> yeah. We back in the studio now? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty crazy stuff. I mean, uh... He keeps yeah. talking about jerking around. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been using that, uh, that particular, uh, that yeah. particular turn of phrase a little bit tonight. Don't trust anybody. He's just saying that Pillman was uh, a puppet. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, this is he, he's Austin was just on fire with his promos at this point. Jesus, this really put what put Austin on the map. I mean, obviously his in ring work was incredible, but Jay, uh, you won't ever see this end ever again. The caliber of a superstar wrestler Stone Cold is. Holy shit. You I just... Everything yeah, was go ahead. At this point, everything was aligned at this point for the blast off of the next... Um, yeah. The next huge wrestling boom, which was, of course, the Monday Night Wars. Yeah. There were so many talents that were coming into their own right now. I mean, look at the Survivor Series that we're a couple of weeks away from right now. You have the debut, in-ring, pay-per-view debut of Rocky Maivia. You have Steve Austin on the card. Yeah. You have Shawn Michaels, you have The Undertaker, you have Mick Foley, you have Bret yep. Hart. Insane. All right, I think I'm coming up on the uh, next commercial break. All right, you let me know when to hit pause, man. You got it. Right now, I see a split screen with Bret Hart and Stone Cold. Perfect. We are. We are. Okay, Vince said when we return. I'm commercial. Commercial. All right, we are seconds. perfect linemen. Yeah. 59 seconds we're at 50 seconds cool yeah this is uh 
This is quite the uh, quite the show. I'm glad we picked this particular one. It's at a time where we are seeing a lot of angles being built up and all that kind of thing. So I'm glad you're able to jump on, man. Yeah, this is great. We're at uh, 30 seconds. So remember, folks, we are pausing for the commercial breaks on Peacock. Of course, if you are watching live with us on Peacock, yeah. you don't need to uh, to for us to tell you this. You're going to be encountering these more than likely. For us here in Canada, you're going to be needing to pause as we play through these uh, commercials. Yes, Nick sir. I'm at uh, 15 seconds, 10 Absolutely. seconds now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. It paused for a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm live. All right, we are live on Monday Night Raw, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Coming up here on the back half of Monday Night Raw, we've got Stone Cold Steve Austin and there the incomparable go. Brett Hitman Hart live in Calgary with Brett, with Stone Cold Steve Austin in studio. And we are here in Fort Wayne, Indiana for live Monday Night Raw action. Uh, Jay, that was awesome. Who are the two kids? That Do we know? Brett's, uh, I believe that's Beans Blade Hart. I'm on some uh, lovely lady. In red, this, who is this? Honey, this is the most beautiful woman in the history of yeah. in my life. This was my first crush when I was growing up as a child. Yeah. I was uh, tender age 13 when I first saw Sunny on television. And uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that uh, I was had quite the crush on yeah. her. It was yeah, a yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Now she's in some jail cell. <laughs> well, she's from New Jersey, pal. You should be... Hey, hey don't associate her with us. Come on! Yeah. Of course, Jerry Lawler, right there. Puppies! Uh, Absolutely. She was uh, the most downloaded uh, woman on AOL, which was like the precursor to, to Google yes. and that kind of thing. She was the... Uh, most popular female um it's a shame what happened person, female person of uh to download on on AOL at the time so, all right who we got here some cowboy all right we have got that, that is billy gunn what the hell? oh him and road dog are both cowboy esques yeah we had just seen the breakup of the smoking guns that is billy on your left and bart gun on your right bart, not, bart that's his name yep not actually brothers in real life but uh, they played brothers on television come on kayfabe oh i'm sorry spoiler alert from 25 <laughs> years ago. My bad. so what's she doing here well, she was the manager of the Smoking Guns until she okay. fired them after they lost the Tag Team Championship at, at near, In Your House Mind Games versus yeah. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. And the story here was they were trying to get, uh, well, more Billy than Bart was trying to get her back as mm -hmm. their manager. And, of course, they had their rematch at the following pay-per-view and lost that match as well. Yeah. And so uh, she she's still kind of, I think, maybe toying with the idea of taking him back on, but... Now we have another um, one of those yeah. management talent guys that we had been talking about earlier. He had been a quite an established guy. This is Tracy Smothers, now known as Freddie Joe Floyd. Huh. And of course, he is uh, well-renowned as being part of the FBI in ECW. Okay. And, and this is back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back jobber matches. Well, again, I think that the idea here is that these weren't unknown kind of local talents. Okay. What to they me, were yeah. To do was kind of establish these guys as as characters with backgrounds and storylines. Well, so did that they way, ever? As the yeah. star would go over them, they would kind of it would give maybe a little bit more credence than just going over, you know, Jim Smith from yeah. Rowan. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at them now, you know. So this this definitely was a a process that helped Billy Gunn, Double J, you know. So I get it. I get it. Oh, who's this? That is Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn, okay. Yeah, so we have See, the brother right here. I know Bart Gunn from that boxing series or the boxing Bart tournament Bart they had. Gunn. Yeah, that's all I know him from. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, they were, a, they were a tag team for quite some time here, so. Yo, Billy Gunn's a fucking stud. Yeah, he is, uh, he is an incredible athlete for sure. Yeah. I, I definitely thought that he could have been a much bigger star in the Attitude Era than he was. Yep. Now he's working for that pissing. What did they say during the Hall of Fame speech? The piss, piss something. 
uh, company AEW. Remember, he was uh, inducted in Triple H at something. I don't know. Yeah, he had say, called it a piss ant company. There you go. Yeah. Well, that piss ant company is doing quite well right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, so if, that, if that's the referee you're talking about there on the floor, that's Tim White. Yeah, Tim White. Damn it. Tim White. Yes. And we have Timmy White, Jack Doan, and, uh, and I Mike believe Hewitt. Jack Doan's in the ring. And then, of course, you're referring to Mike Kyoto there as well. So, my dude. So now we got uh, good old Freddie Joe Floyd from Bowlegs, Boom. Oklahoma, going after, oh, with a reverse uh, elbow there on uh, Billy Gunn. And now he's going for a couple of, uh, well, I guess those are kind of yeah. like your uppercuts and a standing in Zaguri kind of modified there. Yeah. One, a half cradle, with two count, Freddie Joe Floyd building up ahead oh. of steam. But Billy Gunn hits him with the stun gun. Yeah, that's vintage, Michael Cole. Billy Gunn. That's right. Billy Gunn now ascending to the top rope, preparing to deliver what would be his portion of the sidewinder. It was kind of like a Tennessee jam, a leg drop off the top rope. And boom, we got it right then and there. Three. Going back to bow legs with a without a W, I think. There we go. Nice. And how long was he with this gimmick into the next one? Well, he was part of the smoking guns. He went, he came into the company in 92 as part of the smoking guns. Yeah would have been his fourth year around being this okay character. and at this point he would kind of flounder he would do rockabilly which was kind of like a modern day honky tonk man for a couple of months in 97 and then by the time we got to about a year from now he would join the new age outlaws okay i am seeing brett and stone cold back to the uh side by side here yep got ourselves a split screen yep we got Vince, and uh, I guess Vince is asking Stone Cold a question here. Yes, sir. In his Vince voice. <laughs> yeah. One, two, he got it. No, he didn't. <laughs> um, no, it was actually, uh, he was asking Brett a question with his sandals. Yeah. So we got an interview here. I think that this is basically trying to um, establish a rivalry between Steve Austin and Bret Hart. Of course, yep. as we alluded to at the top of the show, Bret Hart had been uh, on a layoff. He had done some tours throughout uh, Europe and South Africa, but wasn't wrestling on WWF television since he lost the championship to Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12, which was March 31st, 1996 in Anaheim, California. So we've got ourselves a pretty solid uh, yeah. rivalry built up here it wouldn't get quite to the level of per, uh, personal issue that it would obviously the weeks and months preceding this but yep. at this point steve austin has just been calling brett out for yeah. a couple of months and brett is kind of just laughing it off at this point yeah and it looks like uh stone cold is just like he's pissed he wants the he wants the match he wants whatever's going to come he wants you know it to happen now yeah it certainly looks that way yeah. Stone cold, blue eyes, bald head. What did JR say? I mean, it's just villain esque 101 right there. Yeah, absolutely. He is a Texas rattlesnake through and through. And Brett just being Brett, you know? Yeah, Brett is just staying cool, calm, collected. Yep. I mean, uh, there's not a whole lot else that Brett's going to do at this point. Uh, he's just training for his comeback match. And look at Steve Austin just mocking everything. Yeah. Russians. Great. Yeah. Austin just doesn't give a damn at this point. No. And that's what makes him, in my opinion, the best. But that's another time and another day. Let's uh, let's track this for a minute. I'm going to play a little bit of this. All right, we'll lay out for a sec. Yeah. Like a gunslinger type situation where, indeed, you've got a reputation. He wants to live off of your reputation, and if he defeats you in Madison Square Garden, the question is then, will you continue your comeback here in the WWF? Well, I mean that's a very likely possibility, and uh, you know what I've thought about that. I'm willing to accept whatever happens in that match. You know, if I come up short, 
then I'm just going to get right back up on my horse like a gunfighter and, uh, you know. Maybe well, see, so here's the, no, here's the deal. Shut up. Here's the deal. Win yes. Draw, Brett. It ain't <laughs> over. It ain't <laughs> over. You're never going to get through with Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're going to have to kill me first, son. And that's the bottom line. And it's the truth. Win, lose, or draw, right. I will always be on your ass. Well, there we go. Steve Great. Austin playing vintage Steve Austin. And uh, there you go. For that, okay. But, um, no, that was uh, that was great. Uh, yeah, you hear Steve Austin just that. This is right at the beginning of his rise. I feel like. Yeah. And it's just cool to see Brett being Brett, calm, cool, collective. You know, doesn't care what Stone Cold says. I'm gonna kick your ass regardless. And I just that that's what makes Brett so freaking good. Oh. He interrupts Vince here. Yeah, let's track this again. Because I just told you what, son. Please, we got a damn problem. Oh, hey, 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 wait a minute. No more. That's, that ain't going to work. That's a protection assistant. You went by a long shot. You don't tell me down. What is this? Somebody tells me down. You want your precious monitors? You think it's all funny, man. It ain't funny, dude. So as we see Steve Austin tearing up the uh, tearing up the production area, yep. Here we go. One half of the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, accompanied by the two-time Slammy Award-winning Owen Hart and Clarence Mason, who, uh, as you uh, asked me about earlier, Nick was He's back. Crush. He is managing the tag team champions of all at this point, and he's going to be going up against the World Wrestling Federation Champion Shawn Michaels. And what do you say? We track Shawn Michaels' entrance when he's ready to come out. I mean, you're going to hear a pop like you wouldn't believe. Let's do it. Absolutely. Let's put. Uh, let's track this now and hear about Owen Hart on commentary as well. Oh, Steve Austin's back at the facility. Don't you even I'm asking to leave. I'm going to do nothing because I'll leave on my own. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, with RWWF. Commercial. All right. Let's pause it, folks. We have Shawn Michaels on his way to ringside. And we have hit a commercial break on the Peacock uh, side of things here. But, Damn uh, Peacock! You hear that pop it was quite loud for Shawn Michaels. Were you already on that area when you hit the commercial, or no? No, I was backstage. It just looked bl black. There was nothing I could see. I could see a, a little bit of Stone Cold, but that's it. I'm at okay. 17 seconds. All right. Well, you know what we're gonna do. I think for everybody, when when you're done and you are um, about to come off commercial break, why don't you give us a timestamp of where you are? You got it. Two, one, I am at 34 minutes and 7 seconds, 10 seconds, 11, 12. I got Shawn Michaels coming pause. out. Let's pause for a sec so we can get back on track with everybody. So let me know when you pause. Yep, 3419. 3419, perfect. And it hit in 3, 2, 1, play. And we are back on track here with Shawn Michaels on his way down to the ring. Yep. We're seeing a recap of what happened last week on Monday Night Raw with the Bulldog and Owen attacking Psycho Sid, who is Shawn Michaels' opponent in Survivor Series. Psycho Sid, one of the most impressive looking athletes in the history of the WWF and indeed wrestling. There you see some more pyrotechnics, some more sparklers like you were talking about there earlier. There he is. Cocky, arrogant Shawn Michaels, I know. Yeah, absolutely. He I well always deserve. Shawn was a much better heel than he was a baby face in my eyes. Oh yeah, I think he would tell you that too. I mean, he was a great baby face too, but I preferred him as a heel, I think. Yeah. And there we see the two-time Slammy Award winning, Owen yep. Hart. All 
Well, we are doing, right. we're doing pretty solid here. I feel like we're making pretty good time. We're going to yeah. have a barn burner of a match here with the Bulldog versus Shawn Michaels. And, of course, Jose Lothario, who is Shawn Michaels' trainer there at ringside. He'd yep. be wearing his obligatory Shawn Michaels glittered blazer, which was, uh, well, it's either something you'd like to have for yourself or you think it's as tacky as all get out. I don't really know either way. but yeah, uh, yeah. We got Mr. Earl Hebner. That's right. A year before he screws Brad. Yeah, yeah. That, that's another day and another time there. Oh, yeah. We're not getting into Montreal. No. And we don't have enough time the left. The usual tie-up. There we go. In. Oh, shoulder block and knock Sean oh. almost completely out of the ring. There's a front salt by Bulldog showing his agility to the fans and indeed the, oh, uh, the audience. That's a little won. odd. Bulldog was a tremendous athlete, and I do think he was coming into his own really at yeah. this point in terms of being the doing the best work of his career, I think, was between, I'd say, 90, 95 and 97. Another tie-up. Uh, side headlock now. Yep, back into the side headlock. Now, Nick, I'm going to ask you some questions. Do you have any uh, memories of uh, Shawn Michaels in this era? I know that you weren't watching at this point, but you said you've gone back and watched some matches. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen a lot of Sean's work here from 96? Yes. And the one thing I can tell you is, dude, he was ahead of his time. Everything he was doing from the moves to the promos to the entrance with the fireworks, the sparklers, dude, he was ahead of his time. He was prime time. He, he's amazing. He's, he's yeah. one of my favorites. Ahead yeah. of his time is is something that should be, you know, put into the, the Hall of Fame right under his name, Shawn Michaels, ahead of his time, because he is phenomenal. You get no argument from me. I completely agree with all of that. I think he was absolutely ahead of his time, and I think most people yeah. tend to agree with that. And I think as well that, you know, he was so fortunate to be able to come back from that back injury of his that yeah. he sustained at WrestleMania 14. And to, or rather, he sustained at uh, Royal Rumble 98. And then, of course, at WrestleMania 14 was his last match. As we see Sean playing to the crowd, trying to get yep. the quote unquote click going for him. Um, you know, having that back half of his career, do you think that. Uh oh. Bulldog's had, leaving. Pardon? Bulldog's leaving. Bulldog's leaving. Yeah. He's, he's uh, as Steve Austin would say, open up a can of haul ass here. Yep. Uh oh. He's coming back. Do you think Shawn Michaels would have had a story to career had he uh, not come back in 2002 and wrestled for another, uh, you know, six six years or so? You six said, three. do I not believe that he would have had a story career? No, do you think that he would be held in such high regard at this point had he not come back? Come the- back. Yeah. That's a good question. I, I don't know. I just know that right now he's ahead of his time. The last time we saw him, I mean, obviously it was Saudi Arabia, but I kind of not, you know, I don't want to think about that. I want to think about his match with Rick. Um, I, I, I don't know. That is a good question. But I think, to me, he's one of the best in the business. So that that might be another day and another time conversation. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I think he definitely made his mark by the time he left in 98. Yeah. That goes without saying. But uh, I think that, he might. There's an argument to be made that he, the best work of his career was done between 2002 and 2010. So yeah. So here, here we see the uh, Shawn Michaels. He has the bulldog down uh, on a in a headlock on the on the ring floor, the ring mat, of course. And now bulldog is standing him up. We're going to be yep. seeing position spot here. I think you have uh, Owen Hart on commentary with Jerry Lawler. These two are always hilarious. Let's track this for a second, shall we? Yeah. another example of the bulldog's power of course we didn't get the yeah. best 
Murray moment there from Lawler and and Owen. It would have maybe tracked made it sense to track a couple minutes earlier, but nonetheless, you can get the gist of it. Owen Hart and Bol- uh, Owen Hart and Jerry. Jay, Lawler. sorry to interrupt, but I'm coming up on a commercial here. All right, we're gonna hit pause when. Give me a second. Okay, Shawn Michaels is on the ground outside. Raw continues. Uh, commercial. 44 right. seconds. No worries. That is cool. Uh, yeah, so we just got an example, a little tiny taste of what it's like to have uh, Owen Hart and Jerry Lawler together at, on commentary as, as heels, you know, is ganging up on the baby face, whomever is wrestling ringside, or sorry, wrestling in the ring or any manager's ringside. I'm sure there was some shots taken at Jose Lothario's age and, you know, having <laughs> All of the rocks and things of that nature. So, 17 seconds. All right. And then we're going to hit play, folks, as we get a countdown from Nick from the Universal Wrestling Podcast, who has a very exciting podcast dropping tomorrow with yes, Bill. Sir. Five, four, three, two, one. Play. There we go. Now, Shawn Michaels. Oh, we're going to get. No, nope, Freddie Blassie. Blassie, Freddie Blassie. I had this CD. It was cool. <laughs> WWF Full Metal, the album. The first album I ever had with wrestling entrance themes. Back to the match. Yes, we are. We're seeing a replay, double feature. British oh, Bulldog God. throwing Shawn Michaels back into the ring. We got uh, Bulldog in a, uh, or Shawn Michaels in a headlock. It was looking like we might be getting Davy Boy doing a military press on the floor with Michaels, but he decided to throw him back in the ring. This is a non-title match, by the way, folks. Well, looks like uh, Bulldog is selling the left uh, knee here. Got a near fall there by Davy Boy on Sean. This is a cool spot. Watch that. Picks him up by his hair and throws him down. Yep. What are you thinking of this match so far, Nick? What do you think of the Shawn Michaels British Bulldog uh, in ring chemistry? Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. You can tell that Shawn Michaels is uh, is at his best right now, or coming into, you know, his uh, the height of his career. But Bulldog, man, he looks so good. He is something that uh, that we kind of miss nowadays in wrestling. You know, like athletic big men. I mean. You can go on and say Omos is athletic and he's a big man, but he can't wrestle like Bulldog. So this is something I miss. I, I, I dig these kind of, you know, these kind of characters. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, Bulldog himself wasn't that big a guy in terms of his height. He was about five nine. You know. Yeah, but five, the appearance looks. He looks big, in my yeah, opinion. Absolutely, he does. He's yeah. jacked to the hills, and he's he is. Yeah, uh, he's you know, a big hard. man. Sorry. He's a big man. He's a big dude. Absolutely. They they were always pushing him as the strongest man in the World Wrestling Federation for years and years. So, you know, you would see him do, you know, the standing vertical suplexes with guys like yeah. Sid would suplex Vader and or things like that, power slam Vader. So he was he was a powerhouse, no doubt about it. Crucifix. Oh, re- countered into Reverse. a small cup. Samoa. Yeah. One, two. I love Vince. <laughs> yeah. One, two. He got it. No, no, he didn't. Oh. I love this manager, man. He's so, he's so, uh, he's in it. He's, 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 he's doing it. He's, he's being that character, you know? Yeah. He's up. He's invested for sure. There you go. That's the word. Yeah. He's actually a lawyer in Florida. He's a, his gimmick was a lawyer, but he's a, he's a shoot lawyer. Okay, they're setting up for the uh, the house segment with uh, Pillman and Stone Cold. Yeah, we're all set for that, but uh, yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see how how this match turns out with Sean and uh, and Bulldog here. Yeah, it's been a good match. A yeah. lot of headlocks, I tell you that. Yeah, yeah, I do agree. All right, here we go. I think we're heating up a little there, Jay. Uh oh. Okay, reverse. One, two. Oh, took his hat off. Oh. 
What a nice clothesline. Yeah, that was a great spot. There you that, go. That somersault into a... Uh, into this is a where the crowd's getting into it, Jay. Oh, yeah. Two! That's another thing, too, you got to remember. Like we alluded to at the top of the show. I mean, this was shot uh, yeah. several weeks of television, all the same venue. So to keep the crowd hot for um, yep. for these particular matches, you know, four hours worth of raw tapings, you got to pull out a lot of di different stars, right? Yeah. Oh, Continue. Commercial. Oh, no, no commercial. Keep it going. We are going. We are keeping strong. We are on okay, Monday. Irish Whip. Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, Shawn Michaels, the World Wrestling Federation champion, <laughs> going up one-on-one -on -one with the British Bulldog, one half of the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. And now we've got the Bulldog going for a press slam. Shawn reverses into, oh, another, oh, here we go. Shawn going for the flying forearm. Boom. That was yeah. Vince McMahon, a little bit of Howard uh, Finkel right there. <laughs> here we go. I'm going for all of it, man. And then we're going to get a kip up from Michaels, it looks like. He is yep. channeling the click, getting ready to get back into it. Yeah. And again, before his time, it's cool to do that now. Yeah. You know, like before his time. Well, to me, that's, that's Sean. That, yeah, that to me is almost like Sean's version of like the bit, like the, uh, the Hulk Hogan, you know, Hulk up, yeah, right? Yeah, pumping up, yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Ten close One, fists. Bring two, close. three, four, five, six, nine. Uh oh, ten. Man, he a lot of a lot of Dolph Ziggler. Obviously, I know it's Shawn Michaels, but yeah, you can tell that uh, yeah. Dolph is quite the fan of Shawn's work for sure. Oh, gonna give him the snake eyes, but reverse into a power slam. Yeah, nice scoop slam there by uh, by Sean. Uh-oh, is he going to oh. do it? He's up. He's getting up. Going for the obligatory elbow drop here. There we go. Boom. Got it. And Boom. it's time. I hear the band tuning up. What about you, Nick? Yeah. Up. Oh, okay. Owen Let's Hart practice. comes out. So we're building up the tension here for Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah, man. This is pretty exciting stuff. I mean, I remember this was one of my, still to this day, one of my favorite matches that Shawn Michaels yeah. ever had in this run. This is great. So now we have Owen Hart and the British Bulldog uh, yep. challenging Sid and Michaels to a tag team match next week on Raw. Yep. You got the guts to fight us. Here we go. They've been doing this for years. You know, competitors going to tag together. It's like, okay. You know, I think the other thing, it just kind of like, now that you say that, it's so funny because when you watch this show and you watch the, the, the performers on it, everybody's yeah. a seasoned performer that, it's a little different than watching today's product with so many of the people on, on the main roster are, you yeah. know, experienced. Yep. Now we're seeing, uh, earlier tonight, Stone Cold yes. messing up the backstage with the TV yeah. and monitor. Yeah. A hundred percent. And now let's track this buddy. You want to, you want to track this one? Yeah, let's do it. What? You got to understand. He thinks, he thinks he can do it. Oh, you see the police? Oh, I'll tell you, this man is going to be in trouble. They're going to take you away in handcuffs. So we'll see you one hour earlier. Next week, 757. And that's it, man. That's Monday Night Raw. Yeah. That was it for uh, this particular episode. I mean, pretty exciting stuff. I, I really enjoyed it. 
I hope you did too. Uh, yeah. It really builds up the anticipation for the Survivor Series coming up in a couple of weeks on, uh, you know, in, in New York City and Madison Square Garden. It's pretty exciting stuff. What do you think? How do you feel as somebody who's never really seen this era that much? Yeah. How do you feel about going into the Survivor Series? Would you be excited to watch that card? Absolutely, man. I mean, they featured and they showed the uh, the important people. I mean, obviously, that's, you know, Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels and Sid Vicious and, you know, people like that. And it just, I don't know, it was just, it's cool to rewatch. Uh, it doesn't have to be pay-per-views. It can be like Raw, like we're watching, or SmackDown or something like that. So it's cool to go back in time and see the evolution. I said the evolution often, you know, with Stone Cold, with Bret Hart. I mean, with Road Dog, you see these these people, you see these wrestlers, and they're just rookies to veterans to Hall of Famers to, you know, whatever they are now, producers or, you know, uh, somebody that does podcasts. It's just, it's cool to see, and it's just, it's cool. I, I love it, man. That's awesome, man. I 100% agree. So I think that maybe uh, if we're going to have you back on in the next little while, Maybe we should uh, revisit here the Survivor Series, and maybe we'll watch one of the matches. Maybe we'll watch that Steve Austin Bret Hart match, or let's maybe do it. We'll watch that uh, Psycho Sid and Shawn Michaels match. I'm down. Yeah, man, absolutely. And of course, uh, we'll be getting back to, uh, to to having a lot of our guests on for for a variety of reasons, booking and rebooking, and all that sort of thing. So we'll see where we go down the pike, but. It feels like you and I are starting to do a little bit of a regular thing here, man. So I'm enjoying it. I'm yeah. So you're able to jump on here again with us. And, man, you got to hit us up with your social media again. Tell us all about what's going on. You mentioned what's going on with your episode. Yeah. Hear all about it again. Thanks, man. Again, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so big thing. We don't usually do interviews with uh, celebrities or wrestlers or anything like that. But there's always an exception, Jay. We are sitting down, me, myself, and I are sitting down with Chris Dunn, a former WWE creative writer. During 2016 to 2021, he left in April. He worked with Bianca Belair during her WrestleMania run, so that was pretty recent. It was a, a lot of fun, good conversation. You can follow us on Twitter, at the UW Pod, and Instagram, at UW Podcast. I love it. That's awesome. I just... I realize as we are talking about that earlier, I gave you a plug during between one of our commercials, but I called your guest Bill Dunn, who's actually a ring announcer <laughs> for WWF back in 94, 95, yeah. 96. So you'll have to excuse me. It is Chris Dunn. That yes, sounds sir. like a fascinating uh, listen. I cannot wait to hear all about that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us this week on the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. We have some exciting content on tap for you coming in the upcoming weeks and months. And, of course, uh, in the next uh, little while, we're going to have some fun surprises. Uh, as for keep, keep catching up with us, we are on Instagram at good uh, double underscore enemies and on Twitter at good underscore enemies. Catch all of our previous library content on www.canadout7.com. And, of course, the Barry Wrestling All Ontario Cup is happening with the live event centers dropping with myself, yours truly, Jay Ahola, as well as uh, some of the other uh, guests and hosts from various platforms. We have Mike and Tyler from Counted Out 7 on there as well, doing some hosting of the event center. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for jumping on. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And thank you very much, Nick, from the Universal Wrestling Podcast. We can't wait to have you back on again. Uh, for myself, for Nick, for Tyrone, for the World Wrestling Federation in 1996, for the Survivor Series, for Psycho Sid, and of course, for Salvatore Sincere, the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. Thanks you very much.